What this has done is it's really woken up my eBay store. Being proactive and making one small change has ultimately resulted in my store coming back to life with a heap of sales. So I'm absolutely thrilled, guys. It's been a really good week in that regard. Ah, oh, yes, guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing it really well. This is the Sunday show where I take you through some of my best sold sales items of the week. I've got a really big episode today because there's a few uh, sales results that I wanted to take you through as well. I ran an end of financial year sale Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week. I've got those sales results to take you through. And then I also want to give you the overall weekly sales results as well. It has been a really good week of productivity and sales, guys. So it's going to be a fun one today. I've got awesome items to take you through as well. If you're a brand new reseller, if you're just starting out, I've got some really good categories for you guys to look for that do go on to sell for some really good money when you're out in the thrift. So if you're a beginner thrifter, this is going to be a really good video for you. Geez, if you're a beginner reseller in general, if you do it on Facebook Marketplace, wholesale, whatever the case may be, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It'd be great to get you on board the channel. We're up to three and a half thousand subscribers now. Things are ticking along really well. We've had the channel for about a year and I'm consistently putting out three new videos every single week. So hit the like button as well for those of you who are regulars. It is always very much appreciated. I can't thank you enough for that. Let's dive into the first item. All right, guys, the first item of the day are the men's Nike Harache running shoes. Now, these were a really good get. I did have to pay up for them in the thrift. I paid $18, but they have gone on to sell for $65 in the space of just three weeks. Now, while I was in the op shop, I could actually see that there were some pretty good comps on eBay for $70 to $80 in pre-owned condition for these shoes. Now, while I was in the thrift, they were in a slightly worse condition in the sense of uh, dirtiness. You can see here that they've cleaned up quite a treat after putting them in the washing machine on a low temperature, a quick uh, rinse of about 18 minutes, and they've come up an absolute treat. So I'm gonna be putting them into the post tomorrow. $65 again was the sale price, but I'm gonna profit my usual figure for shoes, a $27.25 profit. So don't be afraid to spend a little bit more money if you know you can get that resale value on eBay. For me, it's always $30 for a pair of shoes. They're a great category to sell on eBay. I'm always selling my shoes, and I'm generally getting a pretty quick sale cycle. So one to look out for, guys, the Nike brand, it's always gonna go well, a $27.25 profit on that one. Next item up is this Windbreaker Omnitech uh, Columbia jacket. Now, Columbia is such a great brand and I don't find a whole lot of it. This one was a women's large and it did have quite a high price tag on it, $25. This was just in my lockdown trip to the thrift video that I put out on Thursday last week. Um, so guys, one definitely to be looking out for. I undenied around the purchase price of $25, but in the end, I've had just a two day turnaround worth of a sales cycle on this one. This is a sold for $59.95 in pre-owned condition on eBay. Now, I have probably shot myself in the foot here. I do think I probably could have got about $70 or $80. Don't know why I went with $59.95, but in the end, I did uh, a two-day turnaround, a $16.50 profit with this one. So even a $25 clothing item purchase has still been able to almost get me about a 40% profit margin. So in the end, not too bad, but again, I probably could have sold that one for a little bit more. Next item up is a really good book series from Emily Roder, and it is Del Toro Quest. Now, if you've done a few books in your time on the reselling front, you probably know about this author and this book series. What was really good about this one was it was a complete series, books numbers one to three, and it was also a hard covered book series. So you can find this in paperback and it doesn't sell as well as it does in hardcover copy. So I was really happy to find this one. I've paid $10 for it and it ended up selling locally for $70. So a really great sale there guys, an awesome book series to find. It does go on to sell well. I have sold paperback copies of it before, so I was very happy to find it in a hard covered edition as well. Um, the postage for this one, I've got it right here. It's about to go tomorrow. It's ending up, it's gonna cost me about $18 to send it. It's quite a heavy item. It's about three kilos, um, but I do always like to put the hard covered book into something like a cardboard box just to hold it and protect it a little bit better than putting it into a satchel. So for that reason, there it is there, just tucked away into, oh, there is some bubble wrap around it as well, to be honest. So I have looked after this one. The fees were $10.50. The profit in the end was $31.50. Um, sales cycle of 47 days. So has turned around relatively quickly for a set of books, but um, definitely one to be looking out for. Del Toro Quest, Emily Roder. A category you can always rely on in the thrift are the jeans. And I've been able to find these 
these G-Star Revend men's jeans, 34 waist, 32 length. I bought these for $14, but G-Star is such a good brand when I'm buying denim jeans and I'm happy to pay a little bit more for it. Did end up selling for $50, uh, $7.32 on my Australia Post, my business plan for postage. And I ended up paying $7.50 as well in fees. So I've made myself a $21 profit on these jeans and uh, it was a 45 day turnaround, about six weeks to sell them. So jeans are just such a reliable category. Thought I'd put it into the video. One to say, get into jeans if you're not already, but look out for G-Star as well because it goes on to sell well. Another clothing item here, it was a brand that I also wanted to have a bit more of a chat about. It was Nana Judy. This was a jumper, a maroon jumper, a women's size uh, small, I believe. And uh, the comps on eBay for Nana Judy across the board, men's and women's, is actually quite good. I don't know exactly where you can buy this item in retail, but uh, it generally goes to sell well for me uh, on eBay. I've bought it a number of times now, and the sales cycle has always been pretty quick. Now, the sales cycle on this one was just two days. If you watch my Tuesday video, you would have seen me pick up this exact item, and uh, I bought it for $9, a pretty good purchase price for something that was in excellent condition, and it did sell in those two days for $40 free postage. So I thought that was a pretty good turnaround in just 48 hours to get that result. Um, the postage again, $7.32. The fees were six bucks and I profited $17.68 on a single item of clothing. So when I'm generally profiting around $15 to $20 for clothing, I'm, I'm usually pretty happy. So to not only get that result, but also to get it in the space of just two days, I thought that was excellent. And uh, yeah, Nana Judy, definitely a really good clothing brand to look out for. Now, Tuesday's video was a really good one. I was able to buy these items in the thrift that have already gone on to sell, but I was also able to get a really good Facebook Marketplace purchase as well. There were five video games on the PlayStation 3 console that I was able to pick up for $8 each. I paid $40 and I got myself these five games. Already, three of them have gone on to sell in the space of three days. So some really fast turnaround on these games. I knew that they would move fast and sure enough, they have. The one that I've got for you here is Minecraft on the PlayStation 3. I bought it for my $8. This one's sold for 32 bucks, $4.50 in the large Australia Post tracked envelope. The fees of just $4.80. Guys, I profited $14.70 on this one game. But like I said, I've already sold another two at that $15 price point as well. So we're looking at $45 worth of profit out of the three that I've gone on to sell. I've still got two more to go. So guys, what I will say really quickly with the video games on Facebook Marketplace, if you are looking to source them, not only in the thrift, but also on Marketplace as well, is to look for the comps on eBay that are worth $30 or more. I've always found that you get a really quick sell through uh, on games that are a little bit overpriced at around the $30 each, um, compared to those around the sort of $15 to $20 price point. They generally sit for a little bit longer. So I did that on Marketplace, did the comp searches before I bought the games and saw that they were all going for over $30. And sure enough, a really, really quick sales cycle. Now guys, you may have remembered in a recent trip to the thrift video, only a couple of weeks ago, I bought an item that I believe would pay for my entire thrift haul purchase. And sure enough, after 15 days worth of a sales cycle, that has proven to be the case. You might have remembered that I was able to pick up the Wombles. There it is there, the Wombles DVD. This is every single season and episode, all 111 episodes of the Wombles. This DVD, guys, has gone on to sell for $135, if you can believe, on eBay. I've paid just a dollar for it. So when you take out fees and postage, I've profited about $109 on this one. Just an unbelievable get. I'm not telling you to go out and find the Wombles, but if you do find it, well done. But uh, I did want to say that DVDs, you just never know how much these things can actually be worth. And the one thing that caught my eye with this one, and I personally have never seen the Wombles myself to even know that it might be something to look for, it was that it had the 35th anniversary collection written on it. So as I was sort of scanning through the DVDs, I did see that uh, 35th anniversary and I thought that it might have been worth a couple. And um, sure enough, I did the comps on eBay and it worked out to be about $150 worth of value. So uh, the op shop doesn't know that. They still put the $1 tag on it and I'm happy to buy it when I know what the resale value is before I make the purchase. So just a little tip there for you guys. Pay attention to the DVDs that you're looking at. See if there's anything unique about it and then do a search on those. You don't need to be spending hours in the thrift searching for DVDs, but there's just a couple of key characteristics that you can always have in the back of your mind to be looking out for. That certainly paid off for me here. The Wombles, $109 worth of profit on a single DVD. Crazy.
Now guys, here's a category that I absolutely love to sell and I think a lot of people will pass on it when they're in their thrift. It was the hats. I'm always looking in the hat bins. You've got the $1, $2 hat bins all the time and I'm always digging through to try and find something that might be worth some money. Now this one here was an Adidas skateboarding plain black snapback hat. There was nothing fancy about it. I just went ahead and grabbed it for two bucks and I thought I'd list it up for $29.99 free postage with the $30 international rate on there as well if somebody wanted to buy it from overseas. Guys, a $2 purchase has turned into a $43.68 sale selling internationally to the US. So why somebody is happy to pay $43 where well, they could probably buy it for about 20 bucks locally, I, I will never know. But I'm very happy to get this one done regardless. The postage for me to get this hat across to the US is $18 with my Australia Post My Business Plan. So that has resulted in a fantastic sale profiting me $17.13. This was also on the 25% off special as well. So I was actually trying to sell it for $60, but with the 25 25% off, it came down to 43.68. So nonetheless, guys, while it is only a $17 profit, it is yet again, yet another hat sale that I've been able to make. So what I'm trying to say here is when you're in your thrift, have a look around in the hat bins, try and find them for one or two bucks, and you never know, you might be able to sell them for upwards of $50 on eBay. And I've got another one of those staple jeans as well that I wanted to quickly mention too. These are the Levi's 721 uh, Slim Women's Jeans. Now, I bought these again in the thrift for a very low price. You're often finding jeans. It's it's an item you can find a lot of volume of. They're always in there. You're just gonna be making sure you're buying the right brands and the right sizes. Levi Strauss is an absolute staple you can always rely on. I bought this one for $5, and again, a second international purchase for the week, guys. So this one has ended up selling for $67.95. $18 to get it across to the US, again, where it is sold to. The fees were $10.20, the postage was $18. I've profited $34 and 75 cents on a pair of jeans. I think that is absolutely crazy considering they are so common in the thrift. Uh, the profit there, uh, awesome, but the sales cycle 65 days. So it took about two months to sell. Not too bad, slightly over the average. I'm generally around 28 days for an average sales cycle, but still, I'm happy to get the deal done. $67.95 for a pair of used jeans. Levi Strauss, you can always rely on it. So there you go, guys. They were some of my best sold sales items of the week. Hopefully those categories and that bit of information can help you when you're out in the thrift next. And fingers crossed you can make the same kind of profit. Uh, let's dive into some numbers now. I've got the end of financial year sales results that I wanted to bring you in this episode. If you watch that Tuesday video, I did a sale on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week, and it was around the end of financial year, and it was a 25% off my entire store. It was over a thousand items that I was doing at 25% discount. So the sales results I have for you here, if we pull the table up, are some pretty good numbers. I've been able to sell 41 items in that three-day period, a total revenue of $1,124. Uh, the fees of $100. 175 bucks and uh, the postage as well, $325. So guys, my net profit for that three-day sale was $623.40 in just a 72-hour period. So I was absolutely wrapped with that, but even more so, I was wrapped with the continual sales that came in the day's post. So that, again, if I pull the table up and even just show you my analytics here, you'd be able to see that there was an increase based on the sale in my impressions. You'd be able to see that my page views were able to increase and my, also obviously my sales was really able to increase as well. I think there was a five day period there where I had over 10 sales every single day. And remember, the sale only ran for three days. What this has done is it's really woken up my eBay store. Being proactive and making one small change has ultimately resulted in my store coming back to life with a heap of sales. So I'm absolutely thrilled, guys. It's been a really good week in that regard. Um, but I also wanted to dive into the overall weekly sales numbers as well, just to give you a look at how the seven day period went. Like I said, it boosted my sales numbers. There were a few that came through post that sale coming through, and I've been able to sell 73 items overall. So again, a record high. I've never been able to do 70 over a seven day period. So that is a fantastic result. The total revenue, $2,454. The fees, the postage, I bought $207 worth of new inventory, and my net cash flow up until midday Sunday, $1,313.59. So there you have it guys, it was a pretty quiet week last week with only $300 worth of a net profit and in just space of seven days, been able to turn it into $1,300 worth of net profit. So uh, the key takeaways from this guys is to definitely put a sales promotion on your store and give that a go. Um, but there are always things that you can be doing to turn things around if things aren't going your way. You can buy more items, you can list more items, you can put sales promotions on. There is so much out there that you can be doing. Proactivity is the best way to get an increase in what you're after. So thanks very much for tuning in guys. I'm 
I'll leave it right there. It's been a big episode, a lot of sales items, a lot of sales results, and fingers crossed that can be the case for next week as well. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good week yourself. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you.